Hello everyone. The Apostle John um, had an arch enemy by the name of Serinthus. And Serinthus was essentially a Gnostic, one of the first Gnostics out there. Irenaeus, um, who wrote in about 188D against the Gnostics, uh, his book was actually called something like uh, Against the Knowledge Falsely So Called, um, commonly known as Against Heresies. A very large document where he contrasts the apostolic teaching against the teaching of the Gnostics. And the Gnostics taught that the Logos was impassable, like Trinitarians do, and he spends a lot of time trying to show how that's a lie. And it was basically the lie of Serinthus. Now Irenaeus was a disciple of a disciple of John, who wrote the first letter against the Antichrist doctrine. And Serinthus believed that the divine being, whom they called the Christ, separated from the human being, Jesus, at the point of death on the cross, so that the divine being remained alive and Jesus the man was dead. Okay, You have the same thing in the Trinity today this Gnostic belief, uh, instead of calling the divine being the Christ, they call it God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. God the Son, at the point of death, remains alive, um, leaving Jesus the man dead behind on the cross. And so when you ask Trinitarians who was dead, Jesus the man, you ask them God the Son was dead, they don't want to say that because they don't believe God can be dead. So God the Son can't be dead, but Jesus the man was dead. You see a problem there? Because God the Son and Jesus are supposed to be the same person, aren't they? <clears throat> a funny thing happens in the mind of the Trinitarian that sort of betrays their spiritual condition when they start to talk about this. And they, what they like to do when you, when you start asking, well, who was dead then? And it's better to ask who was dead than who died. I want to talk about that first. In the Trinitarian mind, who was dead is actually a different question than who died. Because whenever you talk about this question, they're going to want to talk about what death is. Okay, and it, and it turns out it really doesn't matter. We'll talk about that in a minute. But they want to talk about how you die. You know, they want to talk about not who was dead, but what death is, you know, what dying is. Because kind of what they believe is that when you die, you're not dead. When you die, you're alive. And that's why they want to resort to this kind of talk. And here's what's real funny about it. Um, they'll start by saying, well, you know, Jesus had these two, two natures. The divine nature was alive and the human nature was dead. You see how they're conf conf conflating person and being here now? They're trying to talk about these two natures as if they're two different persons Well, say, you know, out of one side of their mouth, well, the other side of their mouth saying, well, they're, no, they're not persons. The question is, you know, what person was dead for our sins? What person? Not what nature, what person? Who was dead? Not what was dead, who? And so they'll start to talk about what happens when any human being dies, Christian or not. Okay, and this is where it starts to get really weird, because you, you have to start thinking about this. You go, well, wait a minute. You're saying that Jesus' death was kind of special because he had these two natures, a divine and a human. So why are you comparing that to any human being who dies? Are you sort of suggesting there's a divine part to a hu any human being and a and a, a human part? They kind of are. They're kind of thinking along those ways. You see the divine part. Our spirit stays alive. It's the human part that's dead. You see that? What's really more amusing about this is that in the scriptures, they teach that if you become a born-again child of God, you're born again, then your spiritual condition changes. And Jesus says things like, you'll never die. And most Trinitarians will read that like, well, okay, see, this is what happens if you become a Christian. You could die before, but you can't know. Really? 
Ask a Trinitarian, what changed? Does your spirit stay alive? Just like it did before? See, see what I'm getting at here? They really believe that before you're a Christian or bef bef after you're a Christian, it's the same thing. You could never die before. Remember the lie in the Garden of Eden? You won't really die. No, no, no. Satan's lie. You see the difference there? There is a difference when you become a Christian about your spiritual reality. But they start talking about this as if there is no difference. Here's what happens when a human dies. Whether you're a Christian or not, it's all the same. That's how they start talking about it, isn't it? And it's really weird because they start off by saying, well, you know, Jesus had these two natures, and here's what happens when a human dies. Well, wait a minute, humans don't have two natures. You see all the kind of craziness that happens there? The bottom line is, let them define death however they like. And do not ask who died. Do not ask that. Because when you ask that, you're, you're leading into this whole game they play in their head. Well, God the Son died, but God the Son wasn't dead. Jesus died, but Jesus was dead. See that? The question you need to ask is who was dead? Who was actually dead? Who? Not what? Who? The question is, what does not what does death mean? No, that's not the question. The question is who is dead? However you define death, who is dead? Okay? Now in Trinitarian doctrine, Jesus and God the Son are the same person. There's not two persons. There's one in the doctrine of the Trinity. One person. But what they try to do here when it concerns who was dead is they try to convert Jesus into two persons. And that's because in, in their minds they kind of believe he is. He's one person who is two beings. He's the divine being, the one God, because that's what the divine being means in Trinitarian doctrine. The one divine nature, the one God. He's the human being. So he's a divine being and a human being. The divine being was not dead, the human being was. Right? So they're trying to pull off. Well, that really amounts to two persons. Two. Remembering that the word being is just a synonym for the divine nature in Trinitarian doctrine. Or human nature. Being means nature. So the question is, who was dead? Who? If it wasn't the second person of the Trinity, God the Son, then was it someone else? Yes or no? If you're a Trinitarian, I'm asking you this question. Who was dead? Was anyone dead for your sins? Anyone? Was the second person of the Trinity dead? If your answer is no, then tell me, was it someone else, yes or no? See your problem? Jesus was dead. They laid Jesus in the tomb. Jesus. There was a person, a who, in the tomb. That dead body on the cross was a who. Because if it wasn't, nobody was dead for your sins. Nobody. And look at the lie you, you believed. Do you know what, what the first lie they told about Jesus was? Do you remember? When the guards went back after Jesus' resurrection, you know, and they told the Sanhedrin about this, uh, just say, just say, they stole the Lord's body out of the tomb. Is that what you're doing? Jesus wasn't in the tomb. There was no person in the tomb. There was no person hanging dead on the cross. 
because the person, the divine logos, took off at the point of death, leaving the man Jesus lay hanging dead on the cross. The Gnostics had to, the divine being, and the human being, Jesus. And they didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. The Son of God was that other guy who came down from heaven. And at the point of death, Jesus, the man, was dead. The Son of God took off. If you're a Trinitarian, that's what you believe, isn't it? God the Son was somewhere else. Because God can't be dead. The Logos is impassable by Trinitarian de decree. And that's the adoption of Gnosticism, the very thing that John is talking about in his first letter when he's talking about the Antichrist teaching. Same thing. And that's why Irenaeus is saying, man, these guys are liars. The Logos was dead. this teaching that the Logos is impassable is a complete lie. Irenaeus knew it. But through the 4th and 5th centuries you know this Egyptian Alexandrian thought took over because it was highly influenced by Gnosticism and this Gnostic element, which is one of the key elements of this lie, if not the key element, was adopted by the formulators of the Trinity. The Logos is impassable and only appeared to die. Exactly what the Gnostics preached. Exactly. It's a lie. John said, we touched the Logos. What's he saying? That flesh on the cross that was hanging dead, that's the Logos. And that's what Trinitarians deny. Because the Logos equals, is equivalent to God the Son, and God the Son was not dead, was not that dead flesh hanging on the cross. The Gnostic lie. Right? So I'll leave you with this question. A couple of questions. If you're a Trinitarian, and you're, you're saying that when Jesus died it was kind of a special thing, why do you resort to explaining what happens when any human dies? What happens? We don't have two divine natures. My second question would be, if you're a Trinitarian, why do you resort to what happens when any human dies? When what happens um, when you become a Christian is supposed to change? For most of you Trinitarians, you believe that once you become a Christian, that's when you never die. Right? How come you're applying to this all human beings? Is that because your spiritual condition is such that you really don't believe that? And you don't know any different because you haven't been born again? Or what? And my third question is, who was dead? Who was hanging dead on the cross? Who was it? Was it the second person of the Trinity, also known as God the Son? Was God the Son, the second person of the Trinity, dead on that cross? And if your answer is no, if your answer is no, then could you tell me if it was someone else? And if it wasn't someone else, then who was dead for your sins? Anybody? If your answer is yes, then why are you now um, contradicting the doctrine of the Trinity? Is it for the sake of convenience? Because in the doctrine of the Trinity, God the Son cannot be dead. God the Son is impossible. The Logos is impossible. It's the lie of Serinthus, the Gnostic lie, the Antichrist teaching. Isn't it? God bless you.